the Brexit deal we're going to get. You're listening to a snippet of a podcast I did with THA Talks. To see the full podcast, click the link in the description below. Make sure you join in the debate in the comments and subscribe. What do you, how do you see this? Do you think we're just going to end up with a very hard Brexit, have some tough years and just, just pull our sleeves up? Or can you see, that is there a lot of smoke and mirrors and we're going to get a half decent deal and it's not going to be a big big deal, we're going to get out of Europe and that's that? Or is there going to be some dirty work and we're going to end up just still being in the EU, probably with the worst deal that we've got now? It's going to be labelled Brexit no matter what. And whoever's in charge are going to sell it as mm. we've had Brexit. We've done what you said. But we, the, there's a lot of um, not... Labour is not really like selling the idea of um, stopping immigration. And the, even the Conservatives are saying we're going to have a transitional period. Um, and that would anger a lot of people if it meant that that transitional period included immigration and we didn't stop immigration. Economically, we are likely to go through a recession or at least a a bit of turmoil over the next few years. And that's likely to put our kind of begging for better trade deals even, even greater. So we're likely to not stop immigration in favour of getting those trade deals. Um, And so essentially, we will get a Brexit. We might leave the European Economic Community and we might uh, stop all laws from them and use the Great Repeal Bill to um, import all their laws to UK law, um, if Labour allow it. Uh, They look like they're going to stop it to try and uh, invoke another election um, I don't think they'll be successful um, because just because of the numbers that they have. Um, anyway, they're on summer break right now. I think there's going to be a lot of mulling over um, for T- Theresa May. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn's going to look a lot better because he's not on holiday while she is. Um, and we, the, the negotiations are going to get dragged out a lot longer than we might expect as well. I know that they've got a two-year time period, but I think there's going to be this transitional arrangement um, where essentially nothing really changes in the UK. Um, But we remain politically unstable. Um, In that political instability, um, the economy is going to waver. um, And to be honest, after that, it's it's very difficult to predict because um, it all depends how Europe reacts to us. I don't think they're going to allow us access to the single market without free movement of people. Um, they're not going to... Um, what They may well stop trade arrangements with us um, and be a bit kind of shifty on that because they don't want to see Europe or the European Union punished or they don't want to see it divided. So for the UK, it's going to mean a lot of uncertainty and it's, uh, sorry guys, it's very depressing. <laughs> no, but you're being honest about what you see, Chris, and that's what we want. Yeah. You know? and, and yeah, I, I get it. I mean, you're, you're not an oracle. You can't see uh, into the distant uh, distant depths of the future. And, and none of us can. Uh, and, you know, but, you, but you're, you're trying to see forwards and you're trying to express that to people. And, and, that, and that's, what's so really, that's what's so really interesting about, about your work and, and, you do, and you put it and you have the, the courage to put your point of view out there. Um, if you wouldn't mind, I mean, I, I would sort of come back into that picture and say that, yeah, I fundamentally agree with you. You know, but, but there's a sort of push me pull you with forces, isn't there? And and that there's going to be some form of Brexit, but exactly what it means, who knows? Um, I, I had a word with Liberal Leave the other day, uh, because you may not know that all the main parties had a Leave faction. Uh, and so there's, there's a Labour Leave, there's a Green Leave even, but there's a Liberal Leave. And and you were you said earlier that you kind of maybe more naturally identified with the sort of liberal democratic uh, you know, free market uh, sort of politics and uh, you know generally i'd say that i feel about the same you know in the circumstances were different i, I might have seen myself as a liberal democrat 
Um, but the, the way that the Liberal Party has embraced the, the Euro cult, uh, and, and with the light in Tim Farron's eyes, you know, it was genuine, genuinely scary at times, wasn't it? Uh, uh, to say nothing of Cleggie, and everyone should vote twice if you're under 30, as he recently said. Uh, so it seems they've come a long way from really upholding those, those free democratic values. Um, and in Liberal Leave, they, they've now come up with this brilliant idea where their definition of leave is to stay in the single market. And that's what they think is the best leave for Britain. But I pointed out that this is exactly the same as Liberal Remain, only who want to also stay in the single market, but, but they want to have a second vendor referendum first. So there is... That shows the kind of mental trickery that a, a Tony Blair type, Richard Branson type faction could come up with and put a bow on it and call it Brexit and say, there, shut up, you had it now. And we found a way that whatever you voted, it, it equals you getting what you get. Um, but it, I think I'd like to communicate back to your listeners who may feel that Brexit is the most terrifying thing ever. Um, you know, but we, we did have really good reason for supporting leaving the European Union. And, and, and for, although the image of the European Union amongst the young is very, very positive, it, it doesn't stand deep scrutiny of the real facts. Uh, and that we were promised that we would be properly democratically consulted before the nation was brought into a federal Europe. We were promised it multiple times, not least by Labour, not least in the 2005 election campaign, where they campaigned to become a government on the basis that we would have a vote on what was then the European Constitution. Now, that was defeated in two other countries, brought back out with the title change with TIPEX to the Lisbon Treaty, and Gordon Brown just before we could sign it and get away with it. Uh, and, and there has been a price to pay for that. And it, and it took 44 years. And I think, I know that the elderly people are blamed a lot for voting Brexit and wrecking the lives of the young. But I would ask people to bear in mind that the majority of those who voted to leave in 2016 voted to go in in 1974. And but we should listen to their judgment of the promises and, on, and how the project actually played out over those four decades. We can come together as a nation and, and we can have a completely new destiny in the world. And that there's a big world out there and the EU is only 15% of it. Um, the, the reason... The election went the way it did was because so many young people turned out. So it's just that you can't listen to young people, or you, you should only listen to the old people because oh, they. Oh no, not changed. not only, but but we should listen. We should still listen to them. You know, I mean, the, the the democratic verdict came out like it did, didn't it? And if it had been remain, it would have been remain, but it wasn't. So. You should still also listen to the people that voted Remain. I, yes, I, I yes, understand I the result of the the, the European uh, vote, but at the end of the day, it wasn't like an overwhelming majority of people that voted Leave. Now I voted Leave, and I still fully engage with and fully talk to the people that voted uh, Remain because they are the people that have an opinion just as equal in just as well as mine. In fact, most of Parliament first did remain. They certainly That's did, 70%. Point me a little bit is that the, the Parliament view of Brexit doesn't represent the national view of Brexit. Uh, 